the whole point of fishing with cheese bait is to catch more fish but smaller in size and I have a specific recipe in mind where I need the fillets to fit inside the frying pan so I'm fishing with cheese bait today trying to catch more fish that are that are of a smaller size so let's see what this one is here So as far as, as as far as bait goes, any any cheese bait, um, the stuff I use is just straight cheese. There's no stink bait or, or any other flavors or scents in it. It's just straight cheese. And over the years, I've, I've found that that works best. And so I've got cheese bait worked out to like a, a science. So with extreme attention to detail, like ridiculous attention to detail. So if you're interested in it, uh, stay tuned. That's the fish, that's the one I wanted. That's it right there, okay. Yep, let's get it in the net. So basically, I fish each spot for 10 minutes with a weight of my own design and a piece of uh, latex tubing here. So over the years, I've learned that you got about 10 minutes to catch a fish off cheese bait before your chances are reduced dramatically. So 10 minutes each spot. Uh, the baits that I'm using are these um, little dip bait worms, which I make out of latex tubing. You can buy that by 12 foot lengths uh, and punch holes in it. I use a number four treble hook as well as 15 pound test leader. And then there's uh, the weight system. Now this weight system right here is not a, a slip sinker. It's, it's designed to anchor to the bottom and to set the hook on the fish uh, without me having to set the hook. So it's like an automatic uh, hook set. Uh, I'll show you how it works. It, it relies heavily on these, these super sharp hooks here. So the idea behind this rig right here is that it is a self setting rig where this weight right here is anchored to the bottom and it doesn't move and the line doesn't slip through it like a conventional egg egg sinker and so when the fish takes this bait right here this hook right here is super sharp and it has this property of like stickiness so as soon as it touches something it just sticks to it all right so when the fish takes the bait the hook immediately engages because this weight is pulling on it and it causes the fish to bolt out of the zone and uh, it basically sets the hook by itself now um, this this works so well I, I know it's unconventional but it works so well that you know I have the problem of having too many fillets uh, in the freezer This one feels a little bit better. Yeah, sometimes I catch a fish that's big enough to where it actually, it actually pulls drag pretty good. I'm using 15 pound test line right here. <clears throat> and so I have the drag configured so that the <clears throat> drag is set to slip at 20% of the breaking strength of, of the line. So 15 pound test, 20%, that gives me three pounds of drag. So I set it using a, a scale, like a, a fishing scale, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a second. But if you do catch something big, which sometimes you do, you need to have the drag set to give up line because uh, in the current, a big catfish, that's another, that's another good one. Uh, a big catfish can pull surprisingly hard. And uh, let me get this one, good fish. All right, so this is the reel that I'm using for this technique right here, and I wanna show you a neat trick. I can configure this reel so that I can cast without a backlash. It'll never backlash ever. Just watch this. All right, so let me make a long cast, and you'll see that it automatically stops. Watch. Okay, cast. See that? It doesn't backlash. Let's try it again. Okay. Long cast, it will not backlash. 
nice so I'll show you how I configured that in a second let me just demonstrate the second thing that this reel does when I make a cast like this it doesn't backlash and then the reel feeds out enough line automatically until the weight hits the bottom as soon as it hits the bottom it's gonna stop free spooling and there it is so the way to keep it from backlashing is to have this just tight enough to where the bait just barely falls down when the reel is disengaged let me see if I can do that okay so the, the weight is not sliding down let me adjust it to where the weight just barely starts to fall there it is right there okay Now the, the problem with fishing with this self-setting rig that I'm using is that if you fish in the primary spots, like this brush back here, um, you'll get snagged and it'll be aggravating because you lose your tackle all day. So what I do is I avoid those primary spots. Now, now there's like, there's fish in there right now. There's huge fish in there, but it's just so risky and so dangerous. I don't feel like getting snagged and getting aggravated today. So what I do is I just avoid the primary spots altogether. Like, like this one right here, look at this. go yeah you see that like that right there that's a good spot and there's and there's fish in there and you'll catch that you'll catch big ones and there's a deep hole down there but the way that it works is that if you fish the secondary spots where nobody else fish like like out there in the middle um, there's less fish there but you spend less time getting unsnagged and less time positioning the boat that at the end of the day you have just as many fish Okay, so like this spot right here, I'm not gonna fish that brush that other people fish. Instead, I'm going to fish out here up ahead. It's got the spot where like uh, gravel uh, kind of turns into rock and it has this like wavy bottom right here. So this is like a secondary spot that not a lot of people fish, but I'm going to rely on the, the calling power of this cheese bait to, to get the fish here quickly. No backlash. It's gonna free spool all the way till the weight hits the bottom. There it is. Reel is engaged. Next, I set my timer. Um, I use an analog timer. I'm so sick of of buzzers and beeps and buttons and apps and battery levels that uh, I I live something close to a phone-free life. It feels good. So if you don't catch anything within 10 minutes your chances of, of actually catching something with cheese bait go down a lot. Over the years, um, after looking at the data, there is a marked drop in, in the likelihood of catching something after 10 minutes. So 10 minutes it is. Okay, so when I set the hook, since it's a self-setting rig, the hook is already pretty much set. The only thing I do is reinforce that. So I basically hold the, hold the rod at a 45 degree angle okay 45 degree angle when the fish takes the bait the rod gets pulled down to you know to level and then the only thing i do is just pull it right back up to 45 that's all the hook set i need so i don't need to set the hook like i'm um uh <laughs> teaching somebody how to do how to do the heimlich maneuver <laughs> it's just rod goes rod goes down i pull it back up and reel that's it This one might be too small, I don't know. Nope, that was that was good too. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Cheese bait. Nobody knows why.
fish eat cheese? It, it doesn't make sense. Like, why, why would a fish care about eating cheese? But I think the deal is that, <clears throat> um, like, cheese is an overrepresentation of what they would normally eat, right? So, like, these fish of, of this size right here are looking for quick protein, right? And, and, if you present cheese to them, that's a whole lot of protein and, well, decomposed protein, amino acids, that, that are in the water. And the, and the fish pick up on that. That's exactly what they're looking for. It doesn't matter what kind of protein it is. They're just looking for protein. And if you think about it, the same thing happens with lures. So I caught this fish with this much time left. But if you look at, uh, if you look at lures, like a, like a pike lure, you know, a pike lure has, has an exaggerated shape, right? And it has an exaggerated color, and it has an exaggerated, you know, vibration, an exaggerated sound, and everything about a pike lure is just a lie. It's an overrepresentation of what the pike actually eat, you know. And fish are just suckers for exaggerations. And this stuff right here, this like disgusting cheese protein, it's it's an overrepresentation of, of what the fish are, are looking for. So, some type of easily digestible, uh, readily available protein. Okay, so the way that I set the drag on this reel right here is to hook it up to a fishing scale. And I loosen up the drag a little bit, and then I pull the scale to see how much weight the scale will apply before the drag slips. So right now it's slipping at one pound, 13 ounces okay. All right, let's see if I can get it to slip at three pounds Three pounds two ounces Yep, about like that just in case you're wondering how these rigs are made What I do is I take a two ounce river sinker like this and I take an ice pick and I enlarge the hole that the line slips through all right and then once i enlarge the hole that the line slips through i take a brass eye this is a 15 16 right so here's the brass eye right here okay i put grease in the hole and remember the hole is enlarged um it has to be that way otherwise the brass head is going to get twisted off because it's too much torque and then i uh basically screw the brass eye into the weight just until it's tight it, it's it'll be perfectly strong enough it's, it has a lot of tensile strength okay now once the brass eye is in there i attach this swivel this jumbo swivel you have to use a big swivel otherwise it gets binded up on there and i put the swivel in there by taking the pliers needle nose and putting it in the brass eye and then opening it so once the brass eye has been opened up with the pliers you know the swivel goes right there and then i take the pliers and close it back up. All right, and now I have a self-setting rig, which automatically sets the hook when the fish first bites. Those fish looked on the small side, but you can see that the fillets from those fit, you know, perfectly uh, in this frying pan. So that was the point. So let's see what I can do with them. Yeah, everything I own is so heavily used, like this stove right here. 